All right, let's get straight into it. With electricity, we learned that static electric charges create electric fields found by using Coulomb's law. Now with magnetism, moving charges create magnetic fields with a different equation for force. Magnetic force is the cross product of charge times velocity and magnetic or B field. Taking a vector cross product isn't testable on the AP, but you can use the equation QVB sine theta to find the magnitude of magnetic force. Because of how a cross product is defined, magnetic force is always perpendicular to both velocity and B field as we can see in our top picture. This equation is what defines the B field. In the bottom picture, we see an example of B field lines for a bar magnet. Magnetic north is defined as where B field lines emerge and south is where B field lines enter. Every magnet has a north and a south. Magnetic monopoles don't exist. We use QVB sine theta to calculate magnetic force, but which direction does it point? We can use our first right hand rule, pointing your thumb towards current and fingers towards B field. That way, your palm points in the direction of magnetic force. If you're a lefty, you're out of luck, because this only works if you use your right hand. So far, B field has just been this mysterious thing we need in order to calculate the force. But now let's talk about what it actually is. B fields form loops around wires. The direction of the loop is found using right hand rule number two. Point your thumb towards current and your fingers curl counterclockwise or clockwise showing you the direction of the B field loop. In electricity, we saw that E fields did work on charges changing their electric potential energy. But B fields are different. They never do work because their cross product used to calculate force always is perpendicular to the B field and velocity. We know B fields form loops around wires, but how do you actually calculate them? One way is to use the Biot-Savart law, which shows that B field is a function of current, length, distance from wire, and angle between current and distance from wire. There's one special case we have to use Biot-Savart's law when dealing with a ring of current. To the right, we see how integrating the equation and substituting 2 pi r for dl gives us an expression for B field at the center of a ring of current. You don't have to use Biot-Savart's law very often though because we have a second, much easier law, Ampere's law. Ampere's law is similar to Gauss's law in that you have to draw a shape, in this case an Amperian loop that encloses 2D current. The integral of B field along the loop equals mu naught times the enclosed current. You want to draw your path so that the B field is the same everywhere on the loop. That way you can pull B out of the integral as shown in the example derivation. Then you can use ratios to find the enclosed current, and we can see that B field in a wire is proportional to radius. Switching topics, we know how to calculate magnetic force, but what about this special case where we have a current carrying wire in a B field? Instead of QVB sine theta, we can use BIL sine theta for constant current, which I remember as BIL. The angle theta is specifically the angle between B field and the wire. I won't go too in-depth right now, but an example application of this formula is when you have two parallel wires. Under F equals Bill, you can find that parallel wires feel a force towards each other, and wires with current going in opposite directions repel. Our last topic for this unit is solenoids. We have another right-hand rule for solenoids. Curl your fingers in the direction of current and your thumb points toward the north end of the solenoid or towards the B field inside the solenoid. Be careful because the B field outside the solenoid is different. B field lines outside the solenoid point from north to south. How do you actually calculate B field inside the solenoid? Remember the equation B equals money with N equaling loops per meter.